Hey guys, today we're gonna make shorty heel tab socks on the circular sock machine, this time on a 60 stitch cylinder. I'm using some yarn from my own shop, Forest Lane Fiber Co. in the colorway Hemlock. This is on High Twist Merino Sock, which is sadly a discontinued base because the mill closed. This video is for those who already know how to use their circular sock machine. This is going to be more of guidelines or a recipe to follow to work through this sock on 60 stitches. If you need more basic how to use a sock machine for very beginners, I will be working on videos like that in the future. But for now, I wanna show you how I work through this sock. This is my 60 stitch cylinder on my Erlbacher Gearheart Speedster circular sock machine. I already have my setup bonnet and waist yarn on here, so I'm going to get my sock yarn attached. This is a rule I have for all sock machine socks. It's very important to use your, your tension up here. It's called the heel spring. You use this for the whole sock, not just the heels and toes. This is going to give you the best results in your tension. And I will be doing a video showing the difference between using it for the whole sock and using it for just the heels and toes. So I'm gonna get started. I'm going to set my row counter to zero. We've got our yarn ready up here and I'm going to crank 10 rounds. with your tension knob here in the middle. I have a blue spot on my cylinder. You might not be able to see right here. That denotes the center front and I have a spot over here and over here in red. Those are done in nail polish to denote where the halfway mark is. So now we will be doing the heel tab part on the back of the heel. I'm gonna lift up half of the stitches on the back and then lift up another three stitches on either side. So we are working across a shortened half of the back of the heel. So we're gonna crank forward. I'm gonna get our heel weights in place. These are the ones that I have. We are going to decrease five times on either side. I decrease just by lifting the needle up out of commission. This is the fifth one. I'm going to lift my heel weights up and in. And then we're going to increase back out four times on either side. So I'm just going to do that by pushing down one needle. The yarn will go in front of the needle, but behind the latch so that when your yarn carrier comes forward, it forces the latch to stay open, grabs the yarn and knits it through the loop. And stop in the middle on your last pass. Right here. That makes it so that all of your gear up here stays out of the way when you are pushing your needles down in the back. Make sure all of your latches are open. Reset your row counter to zero. I'm gonna crank forward 10 rounds. 
on this first pass, make sure you're going really carefully because something squirrely can always happen with your latches not being open even if you check. Okay, now it's time to hang this hem. This is a folded over hem that includes our little heel tab. So we have to take off all of our weights. And I'm going to start over here. I'm gonna start on this side of the sock, outside of where we just did our short rows, just because it's easier to find the column that our needle matches up with uh, when you don't have to find it through the short rows. So just find a needle, trace it down, and grab a pearl bump. It's easiest when your waist yarn is a nice contrasting color. This is a little bit not contrasting, but it's easy enough for me to tell the difference. It's not too similar. It's all the way around. All right, once you've got all of your stitches hung, make sure they all knit together. Now we're going to reset our row counter and we're going to do 10 rounds. Um, this is going to be the space between the heel cuff and when we start the heel. Stop with your tension knob here in the front and we're going to lift up the back half of the stitches and for the 60 stitch circumference I like to add another two stitches on either side to what we're working across so half of 60 would be 30 stitches but I like to do it our, our heel across 34 stitches. This helps give some depth to the heel without adding any extra pointy fabric to the point of the heel. Um, so this is going to reduce the fabric from pulling across the top of the foot. So we're gonna crank forward and get our weights back on. So we're going to decrease from 34 down to 10 stitches in the middle by lifting up one needle per round, or not round, row. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, eleven, and ten. So I'm going to adjust my heel weights all the way up and in, and we're going to start increasing. So the first pass, I always increase by two. On either side. This is going to prevent there from being pointy corners on the ends of your heel. And then going forward, we will push down, increase by one each row. And since we were starting at two stitches past the halfway mark, we're going to do the same thing all the way through one stitch past the halfway mark, and I'll show you what is different with the last set of stitches. Okay, now we are on that second stitch past the halfway mark. So what we're gonna do different is grab our yarn. Well, first we're going to push this needle down and then grab our yarn. It's 
gonna go up around the back of that needle and the one that's standing up next to it. And that's going to close the gap that can appear at the corner of your socks. And do the same thing over here. Push down the needle, grab your yarn, up around the back of that needle and the one standing up next to it. And since this is the last pass of the heel, we're gonna stop with our, your, uh, or our tension knob here in the center front. Keeps it out of the way for pushing the back needles down. Make sure everybody is open and looking good. Reset the row counter. And now we're going to do the length of the foot. For me, I am making a size seven sock for myself. So between here where I'm ending the heel and when I start the toe, I will be doing 58 rows. So here we go. With your tension knob here in the front, take a sip of coffee. We're going to lift the back half of the stitches for the toe. And since the toe is worked in the same plane of the foot, we don't have to do any extra shaping like we do with the heel, like picking up or adding in extra stitches. We're just going to do it over the 30 stitches. That is half of our 60 stitches. So we're gonna move up our heel weights into place and we're going to work this the same way that we did the heel, except it's over 30 stitches instead of 34. So we're gonna work down from 30 to 10 and then back out to 30. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Weights all the way up and in. And same thing as we did with the heel. Increase by two, the first pass. So again, you don't want points on your toes. And now we're increasing by one. Latch is open, guys. This is the last set. And we're just gonna stop here with the tension knob in front, push down the last half of the stitches, or the back half, rather. Latch is open, and we're gonna crank forward until this last stitch before this red halfway point closes around the yarn right there. Now I'm going to cut a tail that is about one yard, one meter, 36 inches, 100 centimeters Boop. long. This is for closing the top of the foot with a kitchener. So we're gonna pull that in, roll it up on the inside and attach our waist yarn. All right, what I do to connect this so there's not, so the stitches don't get super duper loose, I just tie it once and then do a little slip knot in there so it's easy to remove but it holds still. So I do not use the tension, the heel spring tension for waist yarn so that the stitches are nice and big so that I can snip them off easier. So we're going to crank forward. I usually do about 10 rounds of waist yarn. And that's it. If you have another foot, make another sock. Kitchener across the top of the foot, and then all you have to do is weave in your ends and you're good to go. They work perfectly with your tennis shoes, and they're a really great warm weather sock. <laughs>